she's not an ordinary girl. Oh. Praise God. And this snap you said, I posted it. They're very fine. My God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Some people have crush. I don't have crush. I have love. The thing has refused to die. I met this girl about 20 years ago. This year it will be 20 years. Clap for me. Clap, clap. In a generation where relationships know how to last two months. Am I lying? Let's say the truth now. Have you not heard that not say, I'm not feeling it again? Let me tell you the truth. There are many times I did not feel it again, but I, I caught the feeling and brought it back. Nonsense feeling. What did they worry you? Feeling is a person. Uncle P, come and sit down here. Come and sit down here. Clap for Peter. Clap for Peter. Clap for Peter. Right here, next to me. First bachelor. <laughs> We're missing your wife. Oh, we'll start missing you shortly. Praise God. So, I've known this girl for 20 years. Um, and I actually love her now more than when I met her. Actually. Because now I know. You know that time I thought, I thought, hey God, I couldn't even stand my wife's presence. Some of you are in my shoe. You, that face, it will fade. You will see her presence. It's not even look. <laughs> I thought this was the most beautiful thing in the world. I've seen fine girls, Jesus. Do you understand? I've seen fine girls. Because there's a point that love graduates from. He's doing, he's doing you. You have to start doing it. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Let me, let me give you an example before I start teaching. Yeah, let me give you an example. There's a time I decided when I'm angry with my wife, I send her money. I'm telling you, decision. Because at that time, eh, what I tell myself is, you have to do something that counters this demon that is doing you. I I'm being honest with you. So she, she will not even ask me. Some is, is even the time she does not even know maybe something is really wrong. And you know, that's when the, the pain pass. You know, when somebody's annoying you and they don't even know it's worse, then the person that has the confidence to ask you, did I offend you? Jesus! No, you didn't offend me. I'm just possessed. <laughs> I'm just possessed. But it was a conscious decision to take control of the narrative when I'm not feeling like it. I, I share the stories. I, share, I never start my real teaching. Why am I being pointed there? I don't have notes. Today I mean you. Anytime I teach without notes, it's raw. No guidance. Just the meditations I came with. The devil is in trouble. <laughs> Praise God. Julia, you know that's why I like my wife going before me. She'll just come with righteous things, tell you righteous, righteous things. We'll be reading plenty of verses of Bible, tell you story. Does it carry you like Sunday school? You'll be happy, then I'll come and scatter your joy. <laughs> I tell you the truth. <laughs> I want it's truth, but it's truth in the inward part, like the Bible says. You know? <laughs> my wife is holy, Jesus. I'm trying to attain this level of holiness. <laughs> so Fuel scarcity is no longer news in Nigeria. So some years ago, there was fuel scarcity. You know, it's, it was about eight years ago. We we're still in life camp. And uh, Sunday morning, uh, I go angry, she go angry. Um, so I, I, she had dressed up in our house. Julia has a bath before me. You, you know why. Do you understand? She goes before me, like 30 minutes. <laughs> Even though my wife is not heavy on makeup, I don't know what they are doing. Let me give you, let me even clear the picture for you. Julia uses 80% of our closet space. And where we live right now, we actually have a big closet. Plenty, plenty. Pa, 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 pa. She uses 80%. I use 10%. Then the other 10% we share. But you know, women, Julia takes seven hours to find what to wear with that long closet. Me with my limited resources, I take one minute to decide what I will wear. <laughs> Even this evening, I'm a commander making wear this thing. But when, when they are confusing the bed with pra, 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 I say, wear that one. That's the dimension of love we don't to tell people sometimes. There's also commanding in love. 
<laughs> Father, help me to remain here. The, the video quality is better than I, I receive grace, my God, to remain within the parameters of this elevation in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. So she was dressing up and she's like, Are you not going to bath? Person the vexed they asked her if they go bath. I said, I'm not going to bath. You know what she did? She simply undressed <laughs> and wore house clothes. Two mumu children. Who does have sense? We had two children at the time. I mean, I was not born. You know, and you know, mumu bar is like fuel tank. Mumu can be reducing. You see, the gauge is going down. So, like, to, <laughs> like towards like 10 30 ish, the mumu was reducing, reducing, reducing. Now, came down. So I, I noticed that two of us <laughs> since are departed. Praise God. So, but we'll keep to this thing I'm saying. See, because I made a conscious decision that I must counter evil with good. And I, I clap for you for something. Uh, they say, don't worry. Say this year we are meeting monthly. We will teach, we will teach all the parameters and the dimensions. There's a posture required of marriage. I'm not talking about that today. I'll just touch it. In one of these months, we'll enter it. There's a posture Julia has been able to demonstrate that I love. There are people who don't have a posture of reconciliation. It's a problem. So they don't respond to a reconciliatory move. So I just told her we need to go out. She dressed up and followed. Carry is a posture. You're angry, but we follow. She entered car, I entered car. Carry the two innocent children who did not know the meaning of what was going on. They don't know why they all had their bath and stayed at home. They were younger. Remember, there is fuel scarcity. We drove. We are approaching Gogwala. Then when she asked me, where are we going to? I said, we are just having a right to know where. Because I actually didn't know what to do. Well, I wanted that gauge of anger to go down. Go down, go down. Now, there is fuel scarcity. I carried the um, jerrican in the car. We didn't even see fuel to buy. Fuel was going low. When I realized that this journey, Paul see as in local jar and there is no fuel. We now turned back. I remember we went to area 11. That KFC in area 11. We dissipated the remaining anger on top of lunch. The children, of course, had a great time. They didn't even know the meaning of this transaction going on. And we went home problem solved. Why? Until I decisively take an action that ends the crisis, the crisis can end us. Do you get what I'm saying? So certain things are matters of posture. So today I'm dealing with dating courtship and marriage, understanding dating courtship and marriage. I think we'll continue this conversation next month. I, I think I'm sure of that because I can't go as far as I want to go. But I'll lay certain foundations so that we can also take questions. We'll have sufficient time to take questions. You can get papers ready. At any point, your question hits your spirit. You want to write it, just do like this. Ushers will get your signal. We will also take questions if you want to ask it in person. We are always too focused on Satan causing man to sin that there's something we have missed. There's something we have missed. And I'm going to talk about that thing in laying the foundation. One of the greatest things Satan took from man was sense. And I will explain. Because it's so common, especially if you follow my videos, it's so common to hear me say, you don't have sense. You don't have... Some people even take it that it's condescending, I'm insulting. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Let me tell you, the biggest problem on earth today is not salvation problem, it's sense problem. And I'll prove it. None of us seated here who is born again have a salvation problem. You have collected the forgiveness. But the experience of a believer is summarized in the wisdom of the believer. Same problem has been sorted the moment I confess Christ and receive him. But the manifestation and reality of my life is a report card of my wisdom level. That is why in the temptation that actually took away the standing of man with God, it was a temptation that was philosophical. Did God say you should not? It was a question that tested the information God had passed. That is why the greatest suffering of mankind today is birthed by his thought pattern. You know, see, please, let's discern the word for what it is. We're talking LGBT now. It's a proof of how far man is losing sense. 
so that the greatest thing Satan stole after the fact that man could not operate like God is the characteristic that is wise. Look around. The characteristic of God that he is wise. He's so wise, he knows what to do, when to do it, how to do it. It's something he stole. That's why even coming into the faith, you will read in Romans chapter 12, that we should not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind, which is the greatest deal we've got to do. So that's, that's, that's what we're not talking about a lot. So we're so focused on salvation. Oh, and I tell people, oh my God. We have lied to people, not direct lie, indirect lie. Hey, we have preached salvation like just coming to Christ. You're like, you are made. As you are seated here, don't you know the number of broke Christians you have? Who don't even have future hope for money? It's not that they are broke now. They are, in the future, they are also broke, except something changes. Don't you know Christian marriages that are struggling and suffering? Don't you know guys who cannot even handle a relationship? There's a problem. <laughs> There's a problem. Some things we are binding Satan for are wisdom problem. Satan is not involved. If a Satan is happy when ignorance is enthroned, because he has one less job, and can I tell you, Satan is actually not omnipresent, he's one person. The honest truth is that some of us will never encounter Satan till we die. So all those things you have been blaming him, even him is shocked. Because Satan has people like Daddy Gio. <laughs> do you understand? No, no, it, let's be honest. If you are Satan, will you leave that the jail, Bishop Uribequo, Sidroth, Benihi, Christo Ekilome, and be chasing you? <laughs> no, no, let's be very honest. If you are Satan, will you prioritize you? you, you? you I, I watched one video by that the I'm not a redeemed person, I'm a kingdom person. They say I've called different names. So don't say that they have come again. They ought to open branch of RCCG on our head. I watched a video by that Jew. I was like, I had to save the video on YouTube. I felt humble though. So if, if, if you just land at Atlanta now, you just start picture Atlanta, then all your friends will be. Even some people that Jack and God did not send them, they don't go and snap with snow and feel like they have succeeded. And they have not even made it. Not Singapore. He mentioned a part of Europe, mentioned Australia. Australia is the farthest continent from Africa. He mentioned at least six countries in that video that he touched here, do this meeting, touch 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 here, do this meeting, and ended in Nigeria because he needed to catch his service. All this description was under a week. When I do short journey, go London in January, I came back, like they beat me with. <laughs> like Mike Tyson punched me. <laughs> Some of you, including me, Satan may not be personally interested in your lifetime. I'm not I'm not lying. It's just some other keda of lower <laughs> small witch in your village. And <laughs> I do that one first. But you know why Satan is very rested? When ignorance is enthroned, <laughs> it will look like Satan is personally interested. By the way, even when I say Satan himself gets interested, if he likes, he goes himself get interested. At the name of Jesus, every knee bows. So I'm not saying it to elevate his person. I'm just saying even in the keda of the devil's world. Alright? So, wisdom. The greatest Thing that would happen to you when it comes to dating, courtship, or marriage is to listen to the Holy Spirit. I tell people, too many people are hustling to hear me counsel them when they are not hearing the one counselor who is inside of them. I'm not saying that to say you cannot seek conversations with people. And I'll tell you, and I say that with every sense of responsibility. Why do I say that with every sense of responsibility? I'm not afraid that people will stop talking to me. Because there's still a place to talk to me or to talk to anybody. The Bible says, for instance, we should not forsake the gathering of the brethren. That's why we're here. There are committed members of churches. Your pastor preaches well. 
Why are you here? Because there's something you can get from a corporate atmosphere where we interact based on the word of God. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's not your primary, it doesn't dictate what you have to do. If I just, that's why, you know, I released a video yesterday. That's why I see it as a red flag when somebody has to consult before they date you. Because that person may one day consult before they sleep with you inside marriage. You go and check with prophet first. Can I touch my wife this week? Because a lot of times we criticize false prophets. Hope you know if there's not an enabling receiver, there will not be a bold prophet liar. There must be an enabling. It's just like somebody told me in 2008 that I will not see the end of the year. What year are we now? 2023. He said, me, I will not see the end of the year. Not one line of prayer prayed about it. If I, his mouth was smelling, that's how I felt. What's wrong with you? Me. You can kill me. They're not born you well. Because I called him out. You know those people that are going to stay in people's houses? They're not just staying in people's houses. You're oppressing their children. They're not just oppressing their children. You we now put things in our fridge and be putting curses on anybody that drinks this drink. Yeah, yeah, prayer prophet. So here's the deal. I said the greatest thing that will happen to you is to listen to the Holy Spirit. We must pay attention to him. Some things we call prayer points are not prayer points. The only prayer point should be, help me to listen for your voice. So when it comes to dating, let me say this. What is dating? But some people have argued dating is not scriptural. Some people have started dating here this evening. What is dating? Getting interested. What is dating? Interest. The dating process is the process of examining a potential target. Someone say target. Level, 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 level. But believers date differently because in the world in which we live today, before you know it, people don't move, enter house. <laughs> hey, I've done counseling. You know. Two, three months, bang, bang, they don't they do. Jesus, my God, so fast. Everything just moving at jet, jet speed. Pia, pia. Now, a believer dates differently, and I will explain. I will explain. Thank God there are young men in the house. I'm going to tell you the truth, young men. You know, if I, a lot of you that have sex in this generation, you know, I started for sex, I'm coming back to sex. And I'm going to tell the ladies one truth too. If a man comes around you confused, send him packing with his confusion. If a man comes around you trying to see how it goes, tell him to go. He doesn't need to see how it goes. Watch him go. Do you understand? Say, Oga, that go that you want to see how it goes, eh? be going. The only thing that we go here is you. Not only you go go. Why? Before I approach you, I should have dated you. And I'll explain. There are three dimensions of dating for a believer. Number one, identification of targets. What Ruth did with Boaz was to date. Inside that first dimension of identification of targets, there are two dimensions. And I'll use law here. There is what we call invitation to treat, and there's what we call offer. You actually don't offer yourself as a child of God, female. You do, I'll explain invitation to treat. In fact, this is part of how I also got my wife. This is one of the concepts I explained to you, because she was studying business, I was studying law, and they gave, she took some law elective. I explained offer and acceptance, invitation to treat, contract. I taught you, you, you. I'll come to that point. What Ruth did was to invite to treat. Now, when you see an advert on the road, for instance, it's an invitation to treat. It's inviting you to make an offer. When you step in the shop and ask, how much be that? You're now taking the bold step. All that happened was that an advert invited your attention. So for the male, this is what happens. Before I begin to talk, 
to you, certain transactions must have gone on on my inside. So I can't approach you with uncertainty. It means I've not done my job. And let me tell you this, as a lady, that's why 90-something percent of the time, he would not be serious when he comes to you like Nigerian inconclusive election. If he understands dating, he would approach you with a conclusion. The person who may get into thinking and prayer should be you because you may not have seen it coming, but before he comes, he should be conclusive. And I explained the dimensions of it. I said number one is identify the target. That's the male. Number two, pray about the target. You see why people make cheap mistakes? Because people identify target and begin to rush without prayer. Why do we pray? As a believer, prayer is not a monologue where we just talk to God. And that's the problem we have. We investigate from him. Because you can like what God does not approve. It's as simple as that. Don't worry, ladies, I'll come to you. You can identify a target that God. Mm, 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 mm. Some heartbreaks, eh? Satan is not behind it. It's the spirit of rush. And like I always say, rush can crush. You identify a person's babe and you have Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit that knows that he has, she has boyfriend did not tell you. <laughs> Just some fine girl, red hair. <laughs> Everything you shake it. Carry me, there go. No, that's not simple. Do you get what I'm saying? Number two is he prays. In the place of prayer, now this is what happens. In the place of prayer, God will indicate approval or disapproval. When he indicates approval, he will begin to give timing. I'll give you a very simple story. Honest story. I told you I met this girl 20 years ago. I like the girl. Aunt Eve girl has smashed my heart. So I was recovering from injury. Wound. And my heart was young. Not a lot of bandages like, you know what I'm saying? You know, if you take some of us right now, to be honest with you, our heart is strong now. Because <laughs> what it has gone through in life. Like me right now. Someone, someone cannot easily break my heart. What I've seen these 12 years of marriage. I'll be shining my eyes, you will be clapping. You know what I have seen? Julia has taught my heart to. I have sense now. You can, me, you can't give me sleepless night to be crying. No, the tears, my tears time has reduced because the heart that has gathered. They broke it before. I gathered it together with bandage. <laughs> have you ever seen bandage that after the bandage, the blood is still on the external part of the bandage? That means the blood seeps through the bandage and I am really, I'm bleeding. So, you know how I was bleeding. And she had plenty of suitors. If you think this girl is fine, oh, Jesus. Hey, just minus 20 years of my life and just imagine. Fine, young, small girl, you know. Hey, chiquito. One mumu guy that thought you collect the wife that God had ordained for me. He was using prelude to bring crates of egg. Me that couldn't afford one egg, prelude. Me, I was checking. If you see prelude now, do you like it? Flat. That card is not like paper. But then, oh my God. Do you remember? We bring a crate of egg. How can I be bringing a crate of egg to a student? Students are supposed to buy two eggs. <laughs> you bring two crates at once. Wicked people. But God passed them. <laughs> it's me that was striking with pocket money that got her. Nonsense. <laughs> if God has something for you. <laughs> level, 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 level. So you... You collect instruction. Now, people rush. Guess what? Once the target was identified, in the place of prayer, I knew. But God does not see, oh, Jesus died and resurrected from the dead. And he said to his people, wait in Jerusalem. Now, Jesus was resurrected. Why didn't he just give them the power? When it comes to the dating and courtship conversation, the problem a lot of times is that we miss the timings of God. He said, wait until. And guess what? She came to me and gave me a story. She talked about somebody that was asking her. And she, she sounded like she was going to agree. I was burning in my heart. Don't try this nonsense. But there's also the principle of honor. I was not at this level, but I had some sense in the Lord. I looked at her in the face and I said, if you love him and you have peace in your heart, go ahead. Man, I was dying inside. 
Because I knew. Not by power, not by mind, but by your spirit. See, what you get for yourself, you struggle to keep. But what the Lord joins together, let no man. So if I want the place where no man can touch it, let me allow God be the one to do it. And my dear sisters, let me tell you the truth. It has nothing to do with your skirt going up or your blouse going down. It has everything to do with divine orchestration. And by the way, did I tell you, this girl was supposed to be in Samaru campus. I never would have met her. The chances would have been so slim. But she got to school and some problems, some problems happened. And problem. How can you gain admission into the sciences and end up in arts in a different campus? Story for another day. God was relocating her to a point where I would collect her. Simple and short. That's why every time you get bothered about where will I meet him, how will I meet him, what will he say first, will he greet me, will I be the one to greet him, you enter depression because you are going above your pay grade. Divine orchestration is God's business. So there are times you just say, you know, Lord, divine orchestration is your business, so I will not think. That's why I say take no thought while you eat or drink or where would all you be clothed. In essence, that's above your pay grade. My staff don't think of how their salaries get paid. They just expect it. Are you hustling what's God's business? And that's why you're not able to unleash your faith. Because you are taking responsibility that is not yours. So I told her, hmm. of course you've heard me say the story, some of you. I prayed that night. Committed it to the Lord. If it's not you, Lord scatter. Two weeks later, she came to me and like, it's like, it's like you misunderstood me. I was only telling you, I don't like him. In my heart, I was dancing physically. I was saying, are you sure? But guess what? That closed, all manner of guys were coming. This was the closest for me. But there was no release in my heart to ask her out. <sighs> because at that point, agitation to get the best of me. Before somebody else. See, let me tell you this. When it is done right... Listen, you know, when it is done right, you will not do it out of fear. Anybody that can be taken by somebody else is not worthy to be in your life. That's why when you are even saying, some people are distracting him, and you are upping your game to keep him, you have lowered yourself. Because choice is so powerful. In fact, here's the deal. Any relationship not founded in rejection of others is already a problem. Because before you say one yes, you must have said multiple no. Even as I did like this, they are still interested in me. <laughs> so a person who does not lay foundation by showing you how to say no to others is not laying a good enough foundation to take you forward. No is a part of the package. I'll never forget, was this very Galadima roundabout? Something funny. We were going to minister somewhere and my wife was to wait for me. So that I would pick her up. So I, I was driving. She wasn't going to drive. Right here, she was waiting. That's how somebody parked. Was toasting her. So like two years ago. She no agree, Kuma. The man, man no agree. With his useless eating bands. Old things will pass away. It will pass away soon. It will pass away. He was so con We have no confidence in the flesh. Because the sky is fine. He put his confidence in it. He thinks this kind of quality woman will enter that kind of... No, she cannot. I marry quality. My God. See how you are blushing. You can't even control yourself. Oh my God, he's doing you. Oh my God, give her water to drink. <laughs> Let her not choke on my <laughs> accolade. My God. Guess what? Do you know the man stood there until I arrived? I collect my wife, JJ. I beg. Every Benz in this town. <laughs> Why? The foundation that must be laid for anything that will last when it comes to dating, courtship, and marriage is the foundation of understanding denial. For all your life, something will call your attention to betray the oath you will take. But timing, I said even when God gives go ahead, he begins to give timing. Oh, I felt this restraint in my spirit. I felt the restraint in my spirit. So I still said nothing. I said nothing. Because I knew at that time that if I said anything, I was going to say it of my own authority. Jesus said that he wouldn't say anything of his own authority. 
How many things have you said in your own authority? Who told you to say it? Why? As believers, we don't date like point and kill. You know point and kill when you go to where they roast fish? Mm. Okay, that one. Okay, that one. We date by leading. <laughs> this thing I'm telling you is why you will minimize the number of people you ask out and you get no, my dear brothers. Why? We don't start relationships. He starts it. We take it. <laughs> Some people have a problem with me for this doctrine. I refuse to think that God doesn't have an opinion on every matter. Yes, I do the choosing. Oh, but I'm not stupid. You see, I said before you today, life and death. Choose life. Who does the choosing? Me. Who guides the choice? Him. So there are too many relationships in the body of Christ that God did not select. i rather you make the mistake of thinking it was God than to think you can do it without him. Oh, and when the time came, I asked out. And guess what? She still said no. Because at that time, God took advantage of the situation to see my staying power. And it happened for 11 months. So some people send me questions online all the time. I know ladies who are agitated. Oh my God. So that I don't lose him. I'm not yet sure, but I don't want to lose him. What kind of nonsense is that? You don't lose what God gives if you are in God's path. So all you need to do is to stay in his path. She had her fears. Part of what God wanted to do at that time was for me to lay a foundation that crushes the fears. So her fears came in form of questions and my role on that God came in form of answers. She's still running on some of the things I told her in school. Why? They were the foundation of her belief. That's why if I betray those beliefs today, I will hurt her. This is why people start dating and courtship in a process that is certain to bring heartbreak and do not know it. Why do I say it's certain to bring heartbreak? Don't land in marriage with a man who is not talking. Because his speaking will do two things for you. Number one, it will lay a foundation of your expectation. Number two, it will be what you will judge him with as to what he should become. He should open his mouth and talk. So, was it her natural fear? Yes. Does fear come from God? No. Does God take advantage of every situation? Yes. So, God took advantage of that situation to put us in a place where she has multiple questions and tests me to have answers. See, there's no imperfection that God does not take advantage of, including your history. Oh, so they approached Joseph and they were profusely apologizing and Joseph looked at them. He said, no, no, no. God sent me here to save you. I get what I'm saying. So number two, I, I, I talked about timing. Number three, wise actions. This is where some believers miss it. God can show you a target you will not meet. Ask anybody that works in any organization where they set targets. God can show you a person approved by him. You mess it up with your action. So I tell guys, for instance, don't woo a lady you have not wowed. Why? You need to engage the entire frame of her being in the process of getting her. There are two dimensions to getting her. And a lot of believers don't get this. And it's sad. Don't forget where I started this conversation. Sense. One of the hardest things that happen to people in marriage is to be married to people they love but don't like. And I'll explain. Have you ever met a brother you love the God in him but his packaging is everything but you're tired? His commitment to God intact. His capacity to make quid money. You are concerned. You can't see future. You will like somebody who follows God like him. But where he will take you to, you can't like it. 
You, you can't like it. There are two categories of broke brothers in church. The ones that have future and the ones that don't. Both of them may live as neighbors in the same compound. But you will know the difference when you begin to interact with them. At this stage, you have left the approval of God. You have now come into the interactions of man. <laughs> this is where you come to, that you can avoid the grace of God. Paul says, the grace of God on my life has not been in vain. I have given effect to the grace. Let me tell you, there is a way I would have been failing in school. This girl for no gray. Even if he agree in hope, by the time I spill three times, she will begin to reconsider. I'm frustrating the grace. Did God give the direction? Yes. Did God give the approval? Yes. Did I play my part? My sisters, I cannot lie to you. Sometimes, no Satan is involved. Hey, I don't want to look at any direction before somebody say I accuse them. Some people are not just clean enough. You don't smell nice. It's a human part. Some people are not nice. They are fighting everybody. The moment they show liquid matter in the boski. Whoa! I asked a question. What's your general reputation in the community of the opposite sex? What's your general reputation? There are people that when they ask you out in church, God is my witness. It's not that you don't like them. You don't know what to explain to others. <laughs> that you are the most unfortunate one that selected this one. <laughs> it, it, it's they are good though, but you don't know what to explain to the others. Brothers, let me tell you. Sisters, have your gist too. In your community or your church, an average brother, you have made the agenda before. Either after choir meeting, or waiting for all night, or after all night, or when they met, they have discussed you. What's your general reputation? Uh, let, let's go lower, let's go lower. Let, let's get harder. So as you are hugging brothers and just sharing breasts everywhere, some people say, I speak too raw. I'm sorry, I have to say the truth. You know, there are ladies that brothers love to hug, but brothers cannot choose to marry because even how they hug brothers suggests to the brothers that they cannot keep boundaries and an average man is looking for a woman that keeps boundaries. There's a human part too. What is the assumption about you? Oh, oh, you, you think somebody wants to marry somebody that he thinks that everybody is... You know, I, I used to tell people in my... You know, now you have deep freezer, you have microwave. Those days, eh, when they used to preserve soup by keeping it, you know when they pull hand inside soup too much, it goes sour. So if the brothers within your community feel that you don't be sour, it is well. That's a human part. Then brothers, you see, I have told people, where your pocket cannot take you, your sense should carry you. My pocket money, I carry this guy. And let me tell you my reality in school. I will not lie. When me, I was in ABU. My pocket money finishes in five days. I learned to live by faith by being on campus. Not be today, I started to do big, big program. We'll go to, we'll go to hotel outside campus. You know those campus meetings they used to do in the classroom? Hotel. First of all, I used my money in charity and Jesus. They raise others to bring their own. I will never forget. I'm telling you, we're doing program like this. I mean, we're doing some program in ABU that will have uh, uh, what the team members volunteer for strength, 70 persons. All the sisters in my volunteer, you bring your rice, we cook it. Devil is a liar. What are you keeping? What if rapture happens the next day? Oh, the rice is in on it. We eat it. Are you understand what I'm saying? You people are good people. See the way I'm teaching calmly. My God. Father. Hey. I've made it in life. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a human path. But you see with that, with all of that circumstance, for instance, let's be honest here. Brothers, no matter what you earn and your worth, 
one of the things you need to do for yourself is that in the community in which you live, be known as somebody that is not stingy. Mm. Mm. Just show it. Pastor Sheo, Pastor Sheo, please usher them. They sit here. Thank you. Usher them. Thank you. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Please come forward. Thank you. Praise God. Do you get what I'm saying? So there's a human part. Now, if you notice, everything I'm saying about dating and courtship applies through to marriage. Because the problem of Christian marriages today is not that God did not ordain it. You can frustrate what God ordains. You can frustrate it. Is that people don't know what to do. The Bible says the way of the fool wearies them all for he doesn't know how to go into the city. There is a way to go into the city. So when I see some people say, couple go, couple go, please leave goals. It's role. It's the role I play that creates the goal. That's why people are claiming things they cannot have until they have sense to collect the thing they are claiming. My brother, if you like, come and touch this my white canvas that Pastor he's bought for me that I'm wearing for the first time today. See, it's very fine. Just that I have to send the picture. I finally won it. He bought it for me since January. If you like, come and touch it because we have a tapping generation that are not tapping anything. I know plenty of pastors don't like me because of the way me I used to say the truth to because I want to make heaven. I don't want to come to heaven. I say, you are among those that lie to them. Tapping what? I believe in right tapping. I was in a meeting some years ago. Julia and I were co-ministers with a senior minister. He forgot his handkerchief. He's still hanging my wardrobe. I say, man, too. I don't collect. I, I believe that. So I'm not saying... Let me say this. You can waste what you tap by your lack of sense. <laughs> so there's a human part to this dating business. And how do we play that part? James 1.5. He said, does any of you need wisdom? Let him ask. Do you know people are too self-centered that they don't even realize that they need to ask for wisdom? Don't do relationship without asking specific. Lord, I need wisdom to do this relationship right. I need wisdom to do this marriage right. Do you know, rather than pray for wisdom, people are getting angry. Because you are angry with the state of things when you have not asked for the wisdom to fix things. I told you I'm laying foundation now. This dating, courtship, and marriage, I will continue on next month. Don't be angry about what you have not asked for wisdom for. Why are you angry? My marriage is as frustrated as my lack of wisdom. My marriage is as easy to the degree to which I have wisdom. Hey, let's bring it home. Let's make it harder. My dear single friends, you are as agitated as your lack of wisdom. Because wisdom will tell you, especially as a lady, that there's an orchestrator. You are just the actor. You will not be frustrated if you stop thinking of how, when, where, how will it happen. Once you take your mind away from the things you don't control, you have peace. Total peace. Men them that need to move. Once you begin to act on divine direction, you have peace. It's a proof that a brother does not listen to the Holy Spirit to ask out even three sisters in one church. Something's wrong with you. The Holy Spirit did not send you to go and do try your luck. <laughs> because no matter how similar, or like somebody says, similar, ladies look. By the time you're asking three out, you actually have a problem. You don't know what you want. How do Christians date? What's the dating? This boy is 11. You want to lie down when I'm teaching this kind of thing. When very soon you have to date somebody. My friend, sit up. <laughs> Don't bring your hair counseling to me. Make your moves. Once my son confounds babe, I increase his money. Babe allowance, neat. Now the woman will take care of her. Do you get what I'm saying? You add babe allowance. You may not tell him, just increase his, his, his allowance. <laughs> you just realize, he needs to act right. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so how do we date? Dating is that relationship with no commitment. You have not said anything. The problem in this generation is that people take dating like somebody's owing them something. 
Christians don't date to pick their date to understand what God has given. You know why? If you want to pick based on just your observation and not your discernment, you will see enough reason to keep moving from person to person because nobody's got it all. So by this time, I have prayed. Number one, I've identified the target. Number two, I have prayed. I've gotten my confirmation. That's why I say if a man approaches you with confusion, he's not ready. Because he should have gone through the ropes. And guess what? What God starts, he finishes. Why do I say he finishes? I've identified the target. I've prayed about the target. I've gotten my confirmation. My moves are to take what I have confirmed. And the first move is the dating move. Start with normal friendship. Like some of you now, the person you will marry is inside this room. Tonight, the connection begins. Hi, ah, how are you doing? I left your gown. Have sense. You know, some Christian brothers don't have sense. You're just meeting again for the first time. I like you. The only thing in my mind is marriage. Carry your marriage and get out. Only thing in your mind is marriage for what? I just know you. I'm even still struggling to understand your middle name. The only thing in your mind is marriage. Because people end up married to people they didn't like at first sight. Why? When they began to uncover themselves, they realized this is it. So my brother, you must approach in a way that when you are asking, it is mere formality. You have done the job. Don't ask them to take what you have not advertised. So what are you bringing in the dating process as a man? You are bringing your qualities. Not because you want to put a pretentious showcase, you are simply displaying who you are. Now who are with this? Sisters, how does that bounce back on you? If a man is approaching you without demonstrating what the future looks like, let me tell you this. A lot of sisters are in trouble because they, they, they got excited about marriage, not about a person. Forget wedding. What is this, your whole excitement? You know, you know why a lot of people are making mistakes? The real excitement is finally, I will not be a bridesmaid this year. Mumu. All you escaped is being bridesmaid. You lost focus on who? Because you went for what? The question is who? The greatest excitement about the relationship should be who you got. Who is he? Who is he? If they put him on a scale or a mirror that mirrors the future, your selection of him, what will he reveal of the life you have chosen? So the dating process is not because I'm here trying to do 10 10. No, as a man, I have heard, I have seen you, I'm coming close. So all that time, Julius, did you know this thing? All those men were coming. I knew this is the one. There was no release in my heart to ask her, but I knew this is the one. So what was I doing? Let me tell you. I am part of the reason why it was difficult for her to choose any other person. Because what you do in the dating process is that you're putting a demonstration that makes the lady wonder, ask now. Ask now. I'm not talking on due waste of her time, but do you understand what I'm saying? Because at that time also, if she's smart and she has attended meetings like this, she has been taught to know, let me tell you ladies, you know when a man is interested in you. The moment you catch a man interested in you, go in the place of prayer. He has not asked you. You know why? So that you can shorten the journey. There are three dimensions of prayer. Write it down, every lady. Write it down, write it down. Dimension number one. You know, David said, Lord, should we pursue or should we sit down? Say, Lord, do I waste my time or do I? <laughs> so dimension number one is the dimension of posture of heart. Lord, what posture should I take? Is this another brother in the Lord or something is coming? <laughs> That's dimension number one. Prayer number two is dear Lord Jesus seize control of him. And I'll explain why. God can tell you to wait for a person who will be stupid. Because it's not God's will for any to perish. But people will still go to hell. Why? They will choose to go to hell. He can be God's will and see mess up. Take control of him. Why do I say take control of him? Do you know a well-meaning God-selected person can start going after your body and you'll be forced to run not because God didn't have his hand in it but because his flesh took over a process that God was interested in so number one you have gotten the posture God is saying mm, allow relate don't run don't push him away number two you are covering him Lord take over 
Take over, Jesus, take over. This is not the time to get stupidly excited. Please don't get excited over a man that has not asked you out. Because no matter what God does, until a man moves, it's not confirmed. <laughs> you will avoid heartbreak. It's not getting excited. You just call Julia. Hey, Julia, you don't understand what's going on. He's coming closer. <laughs> He's coming closer. He's just trying to date. The mention number three of prayer, you take charge of the entire process. When I say the entire process, it involves everything. It involves those people that Satan will bring to the person as distraction. It involves those who need to give approval to this process if the process begins. You take in charge of the entire process. Then what do you do? You relate. Where you see that posture of the heart and approval, you relate. The problem people have that gives them shocker in relationship is that they don't relate enough. Let me tell you this. Once I have approval in my heart and I'm relating with you, I'm relating to understand you. So I'm not going to meet something that will make me run. We met weaknesses. The weaknesses will not chase us away. The weaknesses will bring us into understanding of what God has given. God gave you to me. So at that point, I, I, I'll tell you something. Me and Julia used to laugh about it so I can say it. I used to be afraid. My wife has totally changed. When we were in school, I didn't know there was a problem behind it. But I was afraid to date this girl because I was afraid I would be embarrassed for the rest of my life. And I'll tell you the point. Julia was among the chief sleepers in fellowship. She would sleep. So I'll be sitting in my corner in the fellowship. I'll be looking at the babe. What are they interested in? She'll just be going... So she, Madam Left Hand, she, she'd be using her note to try to stay awake. Have you seen somebody writing her? I didn't know that her life did not have some sense that God sent me to bring. Julia will stay awake, stay awake, stay awake, and her result was not even reflecting the staying awake. Ladies, you are being observed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. She didn't even know I was watching. I was concerned. I said, I, I'm, this is the girl you want to go and follow. But the selection was made. I had received approval in my heart. I had chosen this in my heart. It was when we began to date. Number one, you know, that's how I tell students, eh, blah, 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 and the kind of relationship, you will fail. When I came into this girl's life, I sat down with her. How do you bring people that have sex to you? We began to analyze her academic situation. Her result only went upward. Sleeping in fellowship began to reduce. Because I began to introduce peace to her life. I, wait, I'm not talking peace that I say, oh, she's not in a relationship, you have peace. No, go and sleep. You will not fail. Read as one so time. Break at this point. You know, for instance, there are people that, it's a man that will come into your life, or a woman that will come into your life, that will tell you how to select church commitments. Those are people who just come, just mention Jesus, they are there. No productivity in their life. They're in every program, every prayer, seven departments in church. You don't have sense. God has other children that will do some things. So for us, certain weaknesses that are not foundational cannot take us out of the relationship. To close here so that we can answer questions this night, I say I'll continue this teaching next month. Three dimension of what you do with weaknesses for the person God has helped you choose. Three. From next month, I'll talk about the asking process instead, the acceptance process, the courtship, then we'll start traveling to marriage. But some principles I've shared tonight, if you notice, I'm stretching them as principles that you run through marriage. Three dimensions of prayer you pray when you begin to uncover each other. <laughs> Three dimensions. Number one, Lord, help me understand this person. If you marry a person you don't understand, you're signing up for frustration. So you see a lot of marriages, it is not the marriage that has problem. It's the parties who have not understood each other. For instance, there are people you will marry, they are slow to respond to crisis. And you may be quick. You know, like I always teach, opposite attracts, then it begins to irritate. When you meet married people, what irritates them is something they once liked. i give you an example. Oh, I love this, my ice water wife. I love the peace she brings. Then we got married and ministry became more and more and more apparent and I needed her to teach. Then the only thing she didn't want to see is pulpit. And I was looking for Mike Slayer. You put all the manifestation and the singing she sang. Give her a part in a choir, she sing it well. Put her on stage and give her a mic. 
I'll just hide myself. She just fall my hand. <laughs> I remember then in school, in the chapel, for them that are not very strong in leading, they will give them midweek service. Even that 15 minutes, they will embarrass their village. <laughs> So I pray for understanding. Help me. Open my heart to know this person. Who is this person? Julia argued a lot with me. Oh. Ah, I had to insist and use the Spirit of God to tell her to connect to who she is. As initially she argued, she argued, she argued, she argued. No, no, no. Why? She had developed a habit that wanted to keep everything spotlight away. That's why she asked me when I was asking her, if my pastor won't be a no do. I said, I'm going to be a lawyer because my wife dreaded being pastor's wife or mama. Why? She had this thing in her mind that there's an over-expectation on people in the, the spotlight is too much. But God began to give me understanding to lure her into where she was going to and not make it apparent. I'm still a lawyer. Do you understand what I'm saying? But see where we are. You know, get choice now. You know, you may just want the privacy of your house. Just be a minister. Your house, Jesus, is like Millennium Park. With privacy. Are you getting what I'm saying? So prayer dimension number one is that you pray to understand who you got. Prayer dimension number two is you begin to pray for their weaknesses. Why? I'm selecting you anyway. So I must begin to intercede. Because like I told you, if you want to wait for the perfect one, you wait till Jesus comes. So you will spot weaknesses that is your responsibility to begin to pray. Begin to pray for their weaknesses. Begin to resist Satan over them. Prayer dimension number three. You pray for wisdom for them. It's one thing for you to receive wisdom for you. It's another thing for them to cooperate with a type of wisdom. Because it becomes stressful when you're the only one that is wise. And that prayer dimension number three releases them into certain things. There are people that God walks into ministries like this because he wants to open their eyes before they take a journey. It's somebody's prayer that is being answered. Oh, don't forget at whose feet they laid their clothes when they stoned Stephen. It was at Paul's feet. So then. And guess what Stephen did? He interceded for them. I'm not surprised that Paul or Saul came to the knowledge of the gospel because prayer went ahead. A light shone at him because somebody prayed. So I begin to pray. I begin to pray the officials' prayer even. The eyes of their understanding must be open. Now I'm not dealing with weakness. I'm dealing with progress. Let me tell you the truth. Don't expect a spouse you have not prayed for. Don't. It's over expectation. Pray specific wisdom on them. Decree that they are a good husband. What are the qualities of a good husband? He understands the demands of a husband from scripture. How will he understand the demands? His eyes must open to see. Like I am here right now, let me tell you the truth. I have made peace with the level of suffering I must suffer because of this marriage. Somebody just looked at me, Jesus. Yes, I have made peace. Even this week, I have suffered that suffer intensively. She knows. And what is that peace I have made? And it comes by revelation. He says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself. So even sometimes when I'm doing one year, year anger, I go back and realize that the oath of marriage that I took is the oath of suffering. It's a light. It's a light. Justifiable anger. You keep it aside. How did Christ love the church? The Bible says, while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. In essence, we had not even confessed the sin. He forgave us and told us, anytime you confess, it's okay. So anytime you sing, Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. I didn't tell you to sing it. Oh, he chases me down. Fight till I'm found. Leaves the night. In all the side chicks. <laughs> just, just, just know what I say. Leaves the night in high. Fight till I'm found. When they are singing that church song in church, I'm not always excited. 
It doesn't lead me to worship. It leads me to think. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love. In essence, I have lost the capacity to think of my vulnerability. Fight till I'm found. So people just be singing that church. People just be crying. You know, you just see some girls crying out today. I say, be crying or crying. My own is reminder. So you pray for revelation. In a feminist generation, my brothers, when you choose wife, you better pray she understands submission from heaven. If not, you have a fellow husband at home. And the fight will not end. So you are praying. And for this third part, I'll just touch it. How does God answer this third dimension of prayer? God will begin to bring people, resources, and materials their way. People, resources, and material. Some of you, you don't even know what you're doing with RM. God scolumbied you here in answer to somebody's prayer. Because your brain is being washed. You know, you, some people tell me, I don't know how to on your page. Oh my God, for the last two years, my God. Somebody wrote to my sister recently, um, you know, she needed to appreciate me, blah, 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 blah. My sister reached out to me. She like, I said, give her number. She sent me one long message. Oh, I was so blessed in my heart. She said, 2014, you may not remember. I told her, to be honest, I can't remember. I walked into your office in Makodi, blah, blah. What you say is, save my marriage, blah, blah, blah. In fact, my little children then, this one is just finishing university. This one is this now, blah. I'm like, oh wow. Oh wow. Learn to pray for people to encounter wisdom. Because some of the frustration you will face with your spouse is a wisdom problem. It's not shouting that will fix it. They will enter somewhere. Something will break loose at light. They will turn. I give two examples, then we'll start answering questions. If you have collected some questions, pass it to Julia already. Two examples. I was teaching somewhere some years ago, Julia and I, and by the leading of the Spirit, I told men to hug their wives and stay in the hug. A man that had been married for 10 years began to cry. Light. Boom! He said he was not raised to be emotional. Now, you have children, you have been married for 10 years. How can you start crying when I tell you to hug your wife and stay there? What have you been doing? How did you, how did you give her the children? IVF or something. You were not intimate, but light came. Light came. We're about a situation where we finish teaching and a man just goes home and promises a new husband. David, sit up. He just confesses, I've been a bad man. I've been a bad this. Do you get what I'm saying? Light. Why am I saying all of these things? Too many times we enter relationship with over expectation and very little intercession. So we just expect somebody to be everything we have dreamt of without realizing the role we have to play. Why are you playing this role? Because you must contend for your gift. God gave you this person, but Satan can corrupt it. So what do I do? I contend for the quality of the gift that I'm being given. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you being blessed? So in the month of March, we'll be back here 17th. Because of the election, we'll not be able to meet in the second Friday like we do. We'll be back here 17th. Of course, keep praying for Nigeria because things must be fine so that we can meet easily. As our Bible says, we should pray for the government and the nation so that we can enjoy peace. All right? We'll be back here um, March 17th. Um, Why Julia sought to start asking the question, um, Nancre, Caleb, Okay, let's, um, let's do it this way. We'll do paper. Where's Caleb? Come, please. Let's give numbers. If we have people that want to ask their question here, this is your time. Okay? Just wave so that we would sort that out. We have, or we have plenty of questions in paper. If we don't have hands... Okay, look, let's... let's do you, did you come with question or the teaching has created a question you'd like to ask? If we don't have that one, fine. We have paper. Don't worry. We'll keep getting the papers sent forward. So, um, sit somewhere around here. If you want to ask it in person, send any usher to Caleb. We'll give you number. Uh, let me also say this one. 
Um, some of you are watching. Thank you very much for your giving. Some of you are seated here. Thank you very much for your giving. Like I said in January, we are growing with this venue. They have been very kind. Pastor Steve has been very kind. We are getting this place at a good rate. I'm going to talk about money because sometimes people just don't know what it costs a ministry to do things. So I do of us that do free events, do free counseling, and just ask people to support. All right? Um, you may not see the level of progress being made, especially we were here last month. The Pastor Steve just started giving this place out. His church uses this place, but they just started giving it out. We are the pioneer users of the renting. You can use this venue for different things. Now you will soon understand and like the place more in the coming months. So more effort is going on than you think. There's a toilet almost completed to make sure facility is good. By next month, I believe this place will be closed. They're doing something up there. But every month, we still spend at least 800000 to do what we're doing. 800000 to $1 million every month. You, you want to give... Um, okay, we don't have our screens here yet. Um, our guys will be glad to give you account number. Um, we should at some point give before we close today. We are glad to continue to do what we do. We do it. There will be... Um, 11 meetings this year. Uh, the July one will be tweaked. It will be the mega hangout. We'll have all the book words of hangout. That will be a Saturday. That's the only one that will be a Saturday. We'll continue to meet second Fridays of the month, except March, because of the election. We are glad to receive. We have partners. Um, you can choose to be a partner. We have a partners group where we report all our travels, all our spendings. We account to the partners every detail. They say they are tired of the details. I don't mind. I give all the details. I remember, like I always give the example, we are at, at this Ababa right now. Three of us just drank tea. It must enter the record. We have records. So every Friday, admin sends me record. Every month, I send partners. This is what we did. Even the tea we drink when we're traveling. Hmm? We bought ticket. And praise God, some of you said congratulations to me last um, week on Facebook. Uh, we landed Benin to preach in Rakai for Pastor Charles Osazwa. While we got into Benin, I got word that my U.S. visa interview was for Monday morning. Got so kind. Got back on Saturday. On Saturday, Had to head to Lagos first flight on Sunday. And on Monday morning, I was in that room for almost one hour. And the lady that I felt to, to interview me did not give anybody visa to my hearing because I was in the room hearing everything. She was the loudest. Did not give anybody visa. The only two persons she gave before I left that room when it was my turn was the man before me and me. <laughs> so, certain things we plan to do in the U.S. We're already having conversation with the people inviting. We are going to the United States of America. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So, give us money. Give dollars. Give pounds. And so, you can also drop your number to be part of the partners. Um, okay, let me say this eh? God will give you money so that you can also give. Do you understand? It's, it's part of the deal. Praise God. What does it mean for a woman to be too hidden to be seen? In the search to be found or seen, what does it mean if you desire Nike shoes, go to Nike shop? Hmm. Hide me, Lord, in your presence. To be too hidden to be seen. Let me say this to you. If you are led, you are not hidden. And if God hides you, he's hiding you to protect you. This is the spirit of fear. That's the spirit of fear. When you begin to feel, and this is why you now come to the point where people now pressure you. Go out. Go. See, let me tell you. Some people have been going out. Nobody has gone out with them. It's not by outing. It's by being led. Because if you are not, see, if you allow externalities control the narrative, you soon start dressing naked. The only person that should tell you are hidden for you to believe should be God. If God tells you you are not smiling, start smiling. If God tells you, this is your indoor behavior, I don't like it. Let it be only God. Or the spirit of wisdom. And I'll give you an example of the spirit of wisdom. I don't know what a single person that follows RNM in Abuja is doing on a Friday evening by not coming for sit out. I don't know. Once a month. I don't know. It's the right place to be. Number one, for wisdom. Number two, for social contact. 
I, frankly, except God tells you don't come, I don't know why you should not come. To watch Netflix. No, that, do you understand? One? That one doesn't make sense. I don't know why any single person is not committed in a social group in their church. You call it department, I call it social group. Because you must meet people. I, I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Why are you not even involved? You are not even expanding your capacity to talk to people. Because sometimes you will belong to a group where you will not find a partner, but you find a recommender. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if the basics of wisdom is already there, you are committed in your local church, you serve in your local church, you are nice to people, stop worrying. The rest is orchestration from God. Do you get what I'm saying? If God wants you to do something specific, like the example we, we used to give, this lady kept getting a nudging in her heart to go and register in a gym. And she felt like, I'm okay. I don't feel a need to. Guess what? As she respected the nudging, the day she registered there, she actually met her husband. Guess who her husband was? The guy used to gym there, but was starting a gym business of his own. Didn't need to come there that day, but decided to go and have one last shot at his subscription because he was starting a gym of his own. That's how they met. One nudging, one leading. Why did Jesus say to his disciples, I must need go through this place? And he went and sat at a well because a woman was coming. That's leading. Why? You may feel hidden for 20 years, 10 years, or 7 years, and one direction will make you wonder, was I even hidden? Because some of us feeling hidden, let me tell you, is that proper English? I don't know, Seth, I'm not English, I'm in Gala. So, <laughs> some of us are feeling that sense of being hidden. The problem is that God is actually saving you from those people that will date you and break your heart, but you, you did not know. Make peace with being single. Be following divine direction. Praise the Lord. Okay, keep going. Where and what is the role of dreams in the waiting face? What is self-aggravation? Hmm. Self-aggravation is when you focus on self, not the spirit. I give you an example of self-aggravation. I am not doing made of honor this year again. Ah, am I the only one? Who told you? How many people have friends that count them worthy to be with them? And who told you it's not at the next wedding somebody will greet you? self aggravate see, it's, it's where you allow emotion take over the leading of the spirit. Comparison, for instance, is one. I tell people, I married early, but I'm not the standard. I'm just one of the series of examples. Let me give you a standard example. Oh, a man was born blind in scripture. He was a full-blown adult. It was after I lied in Benin that I came and told my wife I need to stop lying because I didn't, I needed to cross-check. I, kept, I don't know why I kept mixing it with the 37-year-old guy in scripture. So I kept saying he had been blind for 37 years. I didn't lie deliberately. So I've corrected myself. I've searched all the scripture. I couldn't find his exact age, but he was an adult. Because his parents say he's an adult. You can ask him. But Jesus comes to this guy and his disciples ask him, who sinned that this man was born blind? The problem we have with singlehood many times is that we think there must be something responsible for being single. You think there must be a problem that you are single. And Jesus looked at them and disappointed them. He said his father did not sin, his mother did not sin, no witch is involved, no demon is involved, but for God to take glory. How do you explain that? As well as Nigerians, you must look for what is responsible for the problem. You must not look for the problem. Self aggravation. What did you call it? Then? Aggravation. aggravation. Is that point where you leave God's thinking and focus on your thinking. So what's your thinking? By now, I thought I should remember. In fact, I had the expectation that right after my NYC, now it's 10 years after my NYC, look at me. Even, even my, my body is not in place. Don't worry, somebody's coming for that body. Let me give you an example. Real life example. That the Owojai, the secondary school attended in Kaduna, Daddy toasted somebody in 1970-something. She no gray. Daddy now married mommy. In 2018, mommy passed to glory. She was, I'm not saying that's your story, but that auntie 
was still single, never married, a virgin in her sisters. Daddy went and toasted her again. They have twins now. What are they in their 70s? I've not said anything, no. I just gave you a story. Daddy shot his shot again. And the sister accepted. Do you understand? Give yourself peace. I know as I'm saying this thing, as somebody say, God forbid. <laughs> Is it okay to have sex before marriage? What is your problem? <laughs> What's your problem? Okay, very soon, by the grace of God, we'll have our screens here. But I give you an assignment. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, message translation. It breaks it down perfectly. Now, let me say this, please. And I'm going to answer this question. Please, can you give me that scripture? 1 Corinthians chapter 7, message translation. At least I'll be able to read for you. When you are done with this, and that all of you shouted... Know that we are in a generation where thought is being questioned. There are groups in Nigeria right now that are questioning all we teach about purity in relationship. Using the Bible. Using the Bible. So, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, give a mic. Give a mic. Thank you very much. Um, we should still have it on screen, but yeah, go ahead, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so um, 1 Corinthians 7 in the uh, message translation. Good. It says, now getting down to the question you asked in your letter to me. First, is it, a, is it a good thing to have sexual relations? Certainly, but only within a certain context. Context. Mm -hmm. It's good for a man to have a wife. A man to have a wife. A man to have a wife. Mm -hmm. And for a woman to have a husband. A woman to have a husband. One, one. Sexual drives are strong. That's why this question is good. This um, konji is strong. It's not a lie. But marriage is strong enough to contain them. The container of sex is not relationship, is not courtship, is not dating, is marriage. See, marriage is strong enough to contain it. Mm -hmm. And provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life. Mm -hmm. In a, in a world, world of, of sexual, sexual disorder. disorder. Thank you very much. Yes. So the thing is, this question will continue to grow. It is better we answer it using scripture than to just assume, you should know now. Let me say this to you with every sense of responsibility on this question before we go to the next. If you don't reinforce your beliefs using scripture, you will soon be convinced that what you used to believe is not true. The attack on truth is not going to stop. So, if you, ma, let me tell you, you will soon ask yourself, if God does not want me to enjoy this thing, why am I feeling this way? But let me leave you with one thought tonight. Ha! Father, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to do sit out monthly now, because there's a lot to cover. The Bible teaches sexual restraint more than sexual expression. I repeat, the Bible teaches sexual restraint more than sexual expression. Go and read your Bible. Why? God is big on the law of honor. God wants to get honor out of mankind. So he allowed something that can be expressed dishonorably. Do you understand what I mean? It is where the Lord will... Let me, let me sound like Apostle Aram. The Lord will help us. The, the Lord will help us. Mm. When okay. is your expectation unrealistic for a woman waiting on a man? Must you be emotional into a person into a person at the very beginning to be sure he is the one? No. You don't choose by emotion, you choose by leading. Feelings are fickle, feelings will change. Men of God them, please usher them forward. Praise God. Our people from Rakai will be with them on Tuesday in Abuja. Praise God. That's, um, that's Mr. Osazo, not Pastor Charles. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, is that Pastor? Okay. Praise God. Welcome. Praise God. Feelings, eh? See, let me say this. If I, let me give this example. Clear example. 
Between your car and the AC in your car, what did you buy? You bought the car. The AC is to enjoy the journey. Do you know you be a mumu? You say, this Nigeria is too hot. You leave your room this night, you come to the car. You keep the car on and sleep in the car because you want to use the AC. Do you know, no matter how good that car is, after maybe two hours, the car will tell you, I'm not for sleeping. People elevate the place of emotion and give it a place it does not have. Gary Chapman, in his research, makes an assertion that I agree with. The lifespan of emotion in any relationship is two years. The one that will be doing you before you are required to do it. That's why me, I know. I've known this guy for 20 years. Me, I'm telling you, for the last like 17 years, it's me that is doing this relationship. I'm telling you, all that Mumu we're doing, it has cleared. Let me tell you the depth of Mumu we're doing. You know, you be making call, then the now MTA is very wicked, they introduce extra cool Mumu. Sleep, you will not sleep. I can't remember what we're talking about. We're not building any business, we're not making any money, we're just wasting each other's time. Then our father was working for government, they had landline. Oh, and I finally bought phone. Her and her sisters will do Q, who is making the next call. I'll talk with this girl two hours. Right now, I can't remember one thing we said in that time. I don't know what I thought. <laughs> Easy, come, come, come. Let me give you a standard example. You see, as this fine lawyer is standing here like this. Have you met him before? You have never met him? Come. come here. No, I'm not joining them. Wow. Oh, yeah, come, 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 come. Now, watch. Watch this. Honestly. Do you know his name? You don't know his name. But his tall is dark and handsome. Do you have girlfriend? Do you have girlfriend? Do you have fiancé? <laughs> so you don't have fiancé? And you are not married? Okay, I, I'm not joining you people. You will be friends after now. You exchange numbers. You just become friends, okay? Uh, so you will become friends. You are taller than her, yeah? That's true. You're... Wow. You have Kai, see Kaki. Wow. 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 Okay. You're trying. You're trying. You're trying. You're trying. You're a lawyer. Do you know him? You know his name? Do you have any feelings for him? No, no, well, hold on, hold on. Here's the deal. This is a generator. He can generate feelings in one hour. I said they should exchange number and become friends, which I support in sit out. I mean, they are single. Does he have a girlfriend? And the last I knew, you were in my office even last week. So I know your status. I know people's status by the counseling. I counsel them. He sees single, single. As she's standing here, she has not promised anybody anything. And she's a brilliant lawyer. Do you have ears? <laughs> Caleb. Caleb. He sees single. But after that last sit out, you have not told me I've caught any girl. After all the girls I introduced, he's generating power. <laughs> Feelings are fixed. A woman that does not like alarm, it's not even alarm, that against alarm. Mm. My God. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, baby. Praise God. Hallelujah. Clap, clap. It's a good point to clap. It's a good point to clap. Praise God. Praise God. All right, so um, like I said earlier, we're so glad. Uh, we want to keep it to the 8 o'clock. Um, we're back here March 17th. We would advertise, of course, we would publicize for us to get it. Um, uh, Caleb, we still have the Singles Connect group here. Yeah? How many of us are single here, interested in meeting other singles, but are not on the Singles Connect group? Just wave. You're not on the Singles Connect group. Caleb, please stand up. Eh? My son is raising his hand at 11. There's no connection for you right now. Okay, so Caleb will be right there at the end of this. Caleb is uh, the admin or the leader of that group now. Make sure you meet Caleb. Give him your WhatsApp number. He'll send you the link. We just want singles to have an opportunity to meet um, and see the possibilities of what can happen. So uh, Caleb would be right behind the
Okay. Oh, there are still those who wanted to ask questions here, right? Okay, let's take two of that quickly. Yeah? Quickly. One. There's one hand behind. Okay, we'll take three. Please just, uh, we'll take it quickly. Three. One, two, three. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me on time? Yes. And I'm glad it's three men because I'm used to a ladies asking. Hi, clap for them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Thank God. Um, my question is, what do you do when you are two years down the line in a relationship, when the emotions are gone, the initial gragra is gone, and then you are at that point where you guys face life, settle issues, and then you realize the person you are dating has not assumed the posture of reconciliation. When there's a problem, it's either she's not available or he's not available to make a reconciliation. What do you do? You have prayed, applied wisdom, but there's no returning. You're putting in effort and all of that, but the person is not. So. It takes what do you do, sir? It takes mutuality to graduate a relationship to marriage. The element of mutuality is missing. But I tell people, we don't choose relationships, so we don't break them without God. God, God brings relationship to us. So we must consult the Lord. Because there are possibilities. The possibilities are a lot, amazingly. Do you know you may not be doing something that can trigger the growth in the person? So sometimes we feel all concluded and God is saying, hey, nope. Because every time God does not give a nod for us to leave a relationship, it's because he has a wisdom for us to fix it. So I advise you first of all to go back in the place of prayer. All right? Now, if you have a clear go-ahead in your heart, that this thing, we have reached a point where we cannot move. The Lord will guide your heart as to how. Because certain times, circumstances come not to automatically tell us, out. Alright? Uh, we prayerfully discern the matter. Because one of the ways the devil steals relationship from us that are well-meaning relationship is to introduce situations that look unsolvable. And it's a wisdom problem. Alright? But here's the deal. If this person, after you pray, after you patiently uh, um, put all the skill you can, persist in having a posture because let me tell you this nobody should be marrying who is not a peace pursuer first peter chapter 3 1 to 15 the pursuit of peace is a posture that should exist why you two are too imperfect to have a perfect journey so forgiveness is going to be one of the fixed hallmark of the journey so a posture of reconciliation is a caucus so if the person persists for instance some people they are phd holders in malice keeping Three months. Some people, some people are dating people. This year alone, they have blocked you three times. What kind of dating is that? Three, three times you have been blocked this year already. The person don't go delete all the pictures of social media three times. Their account is like they created it last week, but their account has been 10 years old. Deleting, 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 deleting. Ah, this is well. Though. So if somebody persists in the character, ah, eh, who's not misprofitable to direct? Lord, next. Because... <laughs> Because for every soul that the Lord rejects, there's a David anointed. Mm, it is well. This one, you're wearing this cap, and election is next week. I don't understand you. It's just an outfit. <laughs> it's an outfit. Go ahead, I'm joking. Good evening, Pastor. Good, Good evening. evening, Pastor, Mrs. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk. Thank God. Hi, everyone. Um, I would Do you have really a babe? To know. No, I'm single. Are you dating anybody? Not at the moment. Any target? Um, I've not seen anyone yet. Okay. okay. Praise the Lord. Oh. Hallelujah. All the single sisters in the house, praise the Lord. Did you hear the number of voices yet? Yeah. My brother, make contact tonight. Sure, 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 praise I will. <laughs> so, um, I was into a long-distance relationship in a while. Okay. I noticed from the questions people threw out, no one talked about that. So, I would really like you to share knowledge about how people could maintain their long distance relationship. I know about praying together. You want to enter another one? No, 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 no. When I'm giving you close distance relationship here. Yeah. I really want you to share light to people on how they could handle long distance relationship because when I was in a long distance relationship, it did not really work out for me. And I got this, my lady kept telling me that it is now she knows that I don't know how to handle a relationship. And my second question... Okay, um, let me touch that first one. Because of time, I did a full teaching on this matter on our YouTube channel. But I would make one comment and let you ask your question. 
in our subsequent series here because even some things I've taught online, on top of this sit-out, I'll be answering them in more details. Long-distance relationship is a relationship that has very special needs. The needs are special. I outlined some, all right? So um, your relationship may have been different if it was within a close range. Do you, do you get what I mean? So yes, I agree with you. There is need to actually... I think I may actually even take an entire sit out and deal with it because in the generation in which we live, more people are likely to have long distance relationship. Jackpot number one is a problem. And the realities of the modern world. All right? Please ask the other question if it's something you can trust okay, now. My second question. Okay, um, we all have our love languages. Like for me, I, I love quality time. We need are you guys to, hearing? I love quality time. We need uh -huh. to sit together celebrate moments, give anticipation to your bed dates, and lots more. And I will also want to ask that what do you think will affect um, us when it comes to our relationship and marriage in terms of our love language? I, I love this, but here's the deal. Much as we like to think that love languages that are predominant to us are inborn, they are mostly through exposure, not necessarily inborn. They are learnt behavior. Sometimes our love, what we call our predominant love language is also born out of our trauma. The things we have experienced, the things we fear, and the things we hope for. Do you understand? So here's the deal. There's no one love language that has you bound for life. But do your best to communicate the earliest to your partner to understand what you appreciate the most. Now, and give them time to catch up to it. Because the problem is, people don't often respond to our love language because it's not often their love language, so they don't understand the workings of it. So we need to extend patience. For instance, one of the things that is a big deal breaker for me is communication. And I married a woman that I had to teach communication. Till today, I'm charging phone. Because my wife can be holding her phone and doing stuff, and it's on 3%. Then I'm like, your phone will soon die. My wife's phone, today, today, like it, today, today, we agreed to meet somewhere. I called her and 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 called her. When she called, she didn't even acknowledge, first of all, that I have several missed calls. Baby, did you call me? Jesus Christ. No, I didn't call you. I killed your battery. <laughs> Do you understand? Guess what? Because I was getting closer to her office where she needed to join me to head to bank and all. Do you know what I said? Because I know. I don't need to be told. I said, please, can you remove your phone from silence? I didn't need to get angry over the three or four calls. I know why. I, I said, please, can you remove your phone silence so that when I'm by the gate and I call, is that not what happened? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, <laughs> should I be frustrated? No. I will bring my strength to bear and continually show her. I used one example that worked better for me. I complained. I murmured. I did everything. It was not working. Guess what? On a certain day, I, I will teach about this in full, but let me give this example. I was at the fear queue I didn't have cash. The card on me was the one that didn't have money. I called my beloved wife. Not, not only fewer queue. You know how you are going during first cast and the filling station just opened and you took head. I called my wife one day she picked. She quickly sent money on the card I was with. I got for her. I praised that to heaven and back. I said, just imagine it didn't pick up. It can be a matter of life and death. He sent the message home, not through condemnation, but through a positive example to her. So when we have a predominant love language, we must learn to, first of all, let our partners know it means a lot to us. We must learn to be patient and teach them how to love us that way. Because they are more likely to appreciate a different way. For instance, there are men that buy gifts for their women and their women are tired. Don't buy me gifts because even the gift you are buying does not fit. Send me money. Don't buy me gifts. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? So, again, thank God this second of 11 meetings this year will schedule different conversations and Trash them. Praise God. Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, all, all those people that cannot endure to the end, if you have to, which you don't have to go, ask those people for account number. I told you we are spending money to, for you to be free. Give your giving before you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Are you single? No, sir. Did you come with a babe? Yes, sir. Where is she? My wife is here. My God! My wife. Wife, well done. How many years now? Uh, ten months. Ten months. No wonder she's not looking fresh. Oh, yo, yo. 
All right, sir. Um, I want to ask a question for my sister. She's watching online. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, she she has been dating somebody for about nine months, and all of a sudden, the guy just comes and says, uh, he did a retreat in December, and and God said that he should not enter a relationship and he entered. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say nobody. Who can battle with the Lord? Who, Who can, can battle, battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I say. Finish your question. Okay, so I've tried to give her um, advice based on the level of understanding that I have, but she would still like some clarity to maybe closure or whatever it is they call it. Once somebody quotes God, respect it. Whether true or not true. Why? You don't just marry a person, you marry a mindset. This is not the person I married that people can see. That's her body. The body may give pleasure, I may like her looks and all of that, but my experience here is dictated by her thought pattern. His conviction has been set. And let me say this, I'll teach this in subsequent sit-out in full, in full. If I did a video recently on that, it's not even enough. I'll take full hour and teach it in sit-out. Even people who need to go and consult and hear to confirm is a red flag. Because the Holy Spirit is domiciling me. If I need another man to tell me that it is you, one day may come, that same prophet may come and say, don't touch your wife for three months and I'll not be able to argue. Do you get what I mean? So the moment somebody can quote God, whether it is true or it is not true, it takes joint godly conviction to have a relationship. Now, what I have to say to your dear sister is the fact that it's hard does not mean it is wrong. Living that relationship right now may be hard because there's emotional investment, there's time invested, there's effort put into it, there's plan already. She made plans and the plan is all crumbling. It's better the plan crumbles than her life crumbling. Now, guess what? And I'll also teach this soon. Make peace with pain. There's one suffering we are promised in scripture. Suffering for righteousness sake. Every married man knows that certain times, Satan arranges something that your flesh likes. Even married women know it. Somebody who appears to care for you more than your husband. Every time he sees you, the way he talks to you, your husband has not spoken to you like that for several years. But you know, denying that attention is painful. There are people you have blocked. Everything in you wants you to keep talking to them. We must make peace with pain. There are certain pain that are righteous pain. Learn to cry, but walk away. I'm walking away from the mumu in my life. I'm walking away from this heartbreak. I'm posing like a child of God. I'm walking away. <laughs> Lord, but it is painful. And guess what? God has a lot of hanky. Ask Apostle Paul. Say, my grace is sufficient. Continue to cry. Continue the tears. I'm not taking that turn. Continue. Do you get what I'm saying? She needs to read my book, and I'm serious now. I'm not trying to sell a 500-hour book. Help, I'm going through a breakup. She needs to read it. If I address this matter in that book. Yeah, because the nature of walking away is part of what you must observe in dealing with your healing. And don't lie to yourself. There's a mourning period. She should mourn. But mourning does not mean going back to a person you should leave. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, the reason she's tempted to remain is emotional, not decisional. When she begins to engage the principles I'm talking about, she realizes that her decision will walk away. That's why you cry over people who come back and you realize, I can't take you. I cry though, but you are now back. I can't take you. Why can't I take you? The tears were emotional. My rejection is decisional. Do you get what I'm saying? Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh. Have you had a great time? Okay, if you stay till now, you can stay for th three more minutes. We need to pray. Three minutes. Please, um, media people, give them account number. That screen, since we have refused to ask screen here for now, put it to, put Zenit Bank. Hey! Put GTP, put GTP, GTP, GTP.
Who's GTB? GTB. See the way they just resistance the live back. On top of money matter, I can be very serious. Since I don't lie to people to collect money, please, baby, go and ensure they have the GT account on that screen. Why is that screen blank? Media people, to make it easy. We don't want anybody's cash now except his new money. <laughs> if you have new money, when you're going, there's basket there. So that we don't have problems with anybody. But like I said, seriously, seven to one, 700,000 to 1 million happens every month for sit out to happen. That's the truth. Between rental, media, blah, blah, blah. At least 700 to 1, one M goes on. So we'll be glad to receive. Um, if you are waiting till now, three to five minutes will not kill you. Even the venue have not pursued us for the remaining minutes we have entered after eight o'clock. We need to pray. Can we stand up together and pray? We are praying one simple prayer tonight. One simple prayer. One simple prayer. The will of the Lord will be manifest in my life. That's all we are praying. I step into God's will in these matters. I demand manifestation in my life. That's all you are praying. Just sing something to help us pray. I demand manifestation in my life. This word profits me. And it doesn't matter what my history is, what mistakes I've made or not made. No. I demand a manifestation. I'm a spirit. I speak into my life the things I have received. Jesus said the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. We have not heard empty words. I turn out well. I have a good marriage. I have a good life. My history will bless. Yes, yes, yes. Yam brado shika la brado shkatale varadiata bareka pashoko prede gasara. If you are watching online, is the right time to go. Bareka soto prele gado shkava. Bareka sita ne kasoto pa. I come into full manifestation of the will of the Lord concerning me. Nothing will truncate the will of the Lord. Bareka soto prele gasuta bradia. My life is an example. I'm a good story to behold. Yela brado shkale brati. I'm a good story to behold. I will motivate the nations with the story that is of the Lord. Baraka soto prele gadeshka, masaka le kaposhke tele proska, e prada se kalela, e shaka pa e asalia, proska le kasalia, bakas kataya. Every manova of hell is broken in my life. Baraka sataya, baraka soto prele gadeshka, ya sata le kataska, baratos kele ka, baraf prados kele katai, oshka kele kaske trebo, kaske kalela, baraka sa.
just men made perfect. Lord, the things you have started tonight, the things you are perfecting from here, Lord, we demand testimonies. And so shall it be by the might of your spirit. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.